Mm. Do you know this book? Maybe you've heard of it. You might not have seen this version. This is that fancy illustrated hardcover version. I do love the illustrations in this book. Yeah. So cool. It's a true story about a boy in England who, uh, who went to a school to be a wizard. Totally true. It's his life story, basically. Yeah, it's like a history book, I think they call it. Biography? Yeah, oh, I got scrambled. It's fiction. It's made up. The author, J.K. Rowling, came up with a story in her head. She was influenced by things that really happened in the world. She used places, some that really exist in the world, but she made it up. She made it up. What a liar. She's a lying liar. Except we don't think about people who write fiction like that. We don't say they're lying. What do we say? They're inventing. They're being creative. They're using their imagination. How about this? You remember the bicycle man? That's based on a story from Alan Say's childhood, but he made it up. He told the story. He didn't remember all those details. His classmates didn't even think that really happened that way. Same with this. This is a story of his mom when she was a little girl and how she met his dad. But he wasn't there. He wasn't recording it. Nobody was writing everything down. He made up those conversations. He told the story based on something that really happened, but he made it up. Fiction. How about this? The witch that turns into a glove because she wants to drive the guy crazy who tried to swat her when she was a fly. Fiction. Made it up. And then this one. This is my new favorite. This is the one I'm reading aloud to the class on video. The Serpent's Secret. This girl ends up thinking she's just a 12-year-old um, boring girl. But she ends up being a demon-slaying princess. It's made up, but it's really good. So what do these all have in common? We call it fiction. Remember, fiction is anything that was made up. It could be realistic, or it could be totally fantasy. It could be things that could or did happen to somebody somewhere, or it could be things that could only really happen with some imagination. And so today we're going to read a book called Tar Beach. There are parts of this book that could really happen. There are parts of it that couldn't. And I think you'll figure out which is which. So every book has both. You can't have any book that's 100% totally impossible stuff. There have to be realistic things in the book. What makes a book more fantasy or uh, science fiction is when the stuff doesn't exist or can't actually happen. But this, let's just pay attention to how the author used their imagination. Tar Beach by Faith Ringgold. Tower Beach. You might be asking yourself, because it's a logical thing to ask, what is Tower Beach? What is that title? I don't get it. You will. This was published in 1991. My first book is for my mother, Mademoiselle Willie Posey, who took me to Tower Beach and everywhere else, if she could be here now. And for my three grandchildren, Faith, Theodora, and Martha, they are all strong readers and can fly. And for my children, Michelle and Barbara, they are women now, but I knew them when. And for my husband, Burdette Ringgold, who keeps my feet on the ground, it was he who reminded me about Tar Beach after all these years. I will always remember when the stars fell down around me and lifted me up above the George Washington Bridge. I could see our tiny rooftop with Mommy and Daddy and Mr. and Mrs. Honey, our next-door neighbors, still playing cards as if nothing was going on. And B.B., my baby brother, lying real still on the mattress, just like I told him to, his eyes like huge floodlights tracking me through the sky. 
She's fly. For real? Sleeping on Tar Beach was magical. Lying on the roof in the night with stars and skyscraper buildings all around me made me feel rich, like I owned all that I could see. The bridge was my most prized possession. Did she really own the bridge? Hmm. Daddy said that the George Washington Bridge is the longest and most beautiful bridge in the world and that it opened in 1931 on the very day I was born. Daddy worked on that bridge hoisting cables, and since then I wanted that bridge to be mine. Now I have claimed it. All I had to do was fly over it for it to be mine forever. I can wear it like a giant diamond necklace, or just fly above it and marvel at its sparkling beauty. I can fly, yes, fly. Me, Cassie Louise Lightfoot, only eight years old and in the third grade. I can fly. That means I'm free to go wherever I want for the rest of my life. Daddy took me to see the new union building he is working on. He can walk on steel girders high up in the sky and not fall. They call him the cat. You can use inference to figure out what he does for a living. But still, he can't join the union because Grandpa wasn't a member. Well, Daddy is going to own that building because I'm going to fly over it and give it to him. Then it won't matter that he's not in their old union or whether he is colored or a half-breed Indian, like they say. He'll be rich and won't have to stand on 24-story high girders and look down. He can look at his building going up. And Mommy won't cry all winter when he goes to look for work and doesn't come home. It's kind of a sad story in some parts, but it's told in these beautiful, colorful pictures. And Mommy can laugh and sleep late like Mrs. Honey. And we can have ice cream every night for dessert. Next, I'm going to fly over the ice cream factory just to make sure we do. Tonight, we're going up to Tar Beach. Mommy is roasting peanuts and frying chicken, and Daddy will bring home a watermelon. Mr. and Mrs. Honey will bring the drinks and their old green card table. And then the stars will fall around me, and I will fly to the Union Building. I'll take B.B. with me. He has threatened to tell Mommy and Daddy if I leave him behind. I've told him it's very easy. Anyone can fly. All you need is somewhere to go that you can't get to any other way. The next thing you know, you're flying among the stars. There's Faith Ringgold, the author and illustrator. I do love it when an author makes their own illustrations. There she is with Bibi. A double threat, we call that. Twice as talented, a good writer and a good artist. This is a good example of a serious story that's told in a beautiful way. And by using the imagination, the main character shows us how she can escape her problems and solve her problems. Maybe not really, but in a way that'll make her feel like she did. And so I want you to think about the things in this book that could not actually happen. The things in this book that were totally made up from the imagination. And then today you're going to go and you're going to write a story out of your own imagination. It can be realistic with certain parts that are not realistic. So use your imagination, come up with anything you like, a story based on something in your own life or something based on something uh, that you created yourself, and just let your imagination run wild. Don't worry about it being a complete story. Don't worry about it being the best story. We're going to be writing fiction. We're going to spend weeks and weeks writing fiction. It's going to be fun. You're going to be able to let your imagination run wild. 
There's no right or wrong way to approach it. So have fun, let your imagination fly, and happy writing.